Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, uh, episode 428. Uh, each uh, week we, we meet here to uh, review the uh, questions and answers given on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Uh, with us tonight, we have um, Masataki Wasa. Uh, Masataki is webmaster of um, wasaweb.net. Uh, uh, um, he's also a Google product expert on the uh, um, AdSense uh, community. All right. Um, we have uh, oh, Masataki resides in Wimbledon. Tim Capper, the legendary Tim Capper, uh, he's he resides in Corby, about a hundred miles north of Masataki. And um, uh, Tim can be found at onlineownership.com. Um, he's a Google uh, product expert on the Google My Business uh, community. And Micah Fisher Kirshner is uh, uh, head of uh, SEO for Turn River Capital. Um, he's based in the west coast of the, the USA, um, not too far from Silicon Valley. All right, so let's um, move to uh, our questions. Um, it's the first, we have nine questions tonight. It shouldn't take us long to get through these. Uh, um, the first one's from Bryce Adams. Um, it's titled, Which One is Better for Search Engine Optimization? Did we did we not see this one last week? Maybe not. Uh, anyway, Bryce said, "Hello, I'm helping someone can help. Which is better for SEO? Um, H1 equals category, H2 equals region, or H1 equals category in region? For example, H1 conference venues, um, H2 Oregon versus." Um, H1 conference venues in Oregon, and does it make much difference? Yes, it does. Uh, thanks in advance. Um, yeah. All right, guys. Um, in, 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 what, what do we have for Bryce Adams? I would probably side with keeping it all in the same main header. Um, I mean, I I don't know enough. I don't know anything about the side per se on this, but generally, if it's if it's about um, conferences in Oregon, then you want to make sure that's the main focus because um, with the former where it's just conferences, then it suggests that the rest of the page will have other subheaders about conferences in Oregon, conferences in California, conferences in Florida, that type of uh, suggestion by putting Oregon as, as a subheader. Um, so if the page focuses around conference venues in, in Oregon, then that should be the main, main focus um, and the main part of the header. Thank you, Micah. Anybody else? Okay, let's go to number two on our run list. It's from Michael Zittel. Um, it's titled Remembering an Old Tactic yeah, of uh, uh, RSS Feed Submissions. Um, Michael said, hey, I was just remembering an old tactic of RSS -S Feed Submissions. I haven't used it in years. And understand it's considered spam now. However, I'm just wondering if anyone is using them in any capacity for anything or should they just be disabled on blogs to prevent uh, spammers from harvesting uh, content? Uh, 
would be helpful to know what specific spam content. Um, I know, and one of the old ways of which was to, you know, if you if you use an RSS feed to uh, pull the whole uh, content into the feed, then then you know spammers could pull out the full content of an article. So one of the ways around that was to just show a quick summary um, of the act in the RSS feed, and that was a way to just um, avoid potentially you know bad actors from pulling everything in. Um, I'm not sure of the other kinds of issues that that is potentially being thought of here. Thank you, Marga. Anybody else? Yeah. I think RSS feeds are still useful. As we mentioned um, in the answers, people still use readers to consume content. Um, they are pretty decent ways to let search engines know about your content as well, because RSS feeds are used for discovery. So um, unless you're worried about scrapers, I, I think it's better to have them than not to have them, if that makes sense. Thank you, Mr. Taki. Looks from the looks of um, other other questions answered there. It looks like everybody agrees with you. All right, let's move to number three on our run list. I'm an idiot. Number three uh, from Nathan Bradshaw. Should I use three schemas of each category? Um, Nathan said, um, my landing page contains product FAQs, product listing of different companies. Should I use three schemas of each category? <clears throat> well, like uh, Richard said, uh, you can. Um, but uh, I don't understand why you ha how you'd be listing three companies in it. Like, that's, I, I, I don't think, no matter how, Clever Google is marking up three companies on the same page. Okay, hang on, because he says category in the title of that, but in his description of it, he said three companies. Was I correct in reading that? Can you go up, possibly, Jim? Yep. Just, I know the other way. Oh, well, we can read what that said. You go the other way. No, I mean, I mean, you're going kind of down, but yeah, don't worry, don't worry. Um, <laughs> I know you said FAQ company and something else. Look, that's look. Um, yeah. I mean, why are they on the same page? Oh, there we go. Yeah, I did, did read that right. Different mm -hmm. companies. Yeah, okay. So, look, I think that's going to get... You can do. I don't think it's going to help Google understand anything, really. Uh, you've got a product. Then you've got product from three different companies. So I'm guessing... I'm guessing this... So let's kind of think of this like just for example as like a comparison or a i don't know maybe a a, a buying site or something where there's three different of the same products from three different companies yeah i, I don't really, really think it's necessarily going to help you because 
you're probably going to be marking up your main site as the organization anyway. Then you're going to be listing product, but it's not going to be the same brand name as the actual company. Um, I don't think that would probably be wise. I think I would probably mark up the product and the brand of that product and the price of that offered. That would probably be more beneficial for Google to understand rather than marking it up that it's also provided by this company. If the company is the same as the brand, it could be different. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? It could, it could get very messy if you're saying this is the product um, and of course, if you're marking a product, you typically add brand and price and blah, 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 blah. Um, I don't know. And also a company is different within a product markup. Can you nest them? So I'm thinking, you know, when I read this, I thought my initial thought was, okay, this is a product page. So um, someone's ending up on this page looking at this particular product and FAQ relates to that to that product and then there's similar products um, to that product for that page. So I was wondering whether you could nest FAQ schema within the product schema. Okay, method. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not. Um, it, it's not in my wheelhouse. <laughs> no, uh, and even if it's possible, I'm not so sure whether Google will look into that. Because um, you could certainly nest things right within different schema, but will it work? Yeah. Well, I suppose the only thing to do is test it. I mean, it's not going to do any harm. Yeah. Yeah, it won't do any harm. Um, no, it won't do any harm. <coughs> okay. Let's wander along to number four. If there are no objections. But Radnika Nanda asked the question title, is it worth buying any artificial intelligence based content writing software? No, 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 no. Is, would that uh, be a fair enough answer, an answer for that? Yeah, I think that would be a fair enough answer. There are some exceptions um that you'll find but generally i would avoid unless you are happen to be in the um immediate news category of around like sports information and etc there's some ai out there that can quickly distill breaking type news um but unless you're in that field not a good idea to do yeah Yeah, thank you, Micah. Uh, I, I see Tim Kepper on, on the uh, WCA Questions community uh, on Facebook um, has said that they have a long way to go. Um, yeah. All right, let's um, move on to number, number five. Uh, FIFA and Sari um, has a, a, a commonly uh, experienced. Um, it's it's titled the uh, the rank is going down and not improve, improving at all. Uh, FIFA said, uh, "Hey guys, uh, one page of mine is fully optimized for on page." I've also built pretty good backlinks from the domain authority of 80 plus sites, but I don't know what's happening that the rank is going down and not improving at all. Can you please help? Um, the URL is uh, https full colon slash slash uh, pick 
yourtrail.com no spaces slash packages slash Dubai. I see Christine Hans, um, Estelle Wood, um, and uh, admin uh, on uh, our group. Um, that page, like, I don't know what you term, you see, you're saying it uh, for, for a term. Uh, that page is literally, so it's not like, uh, I don't think it is your site. It looks like some page and subdomain on something or other. But anyway, um, it, it, the page is massive. You, like you've got uh, all this weird type of like different bits of content for Dubai. You've got all these other different packages on Dubai. You've got uh, uh, what to see in Dubai. It's like literally all on the same page. Um, I, th I think you've overcooked the recipe there. In, in, in all honesty, like, you know, if you if you look at any other travel kind of site, you've got the main page, like, welcome to, you know, uh, welcome to Travel Dubai, uh, where we, uh, you know, blah, 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 we've been in, you know, uh, we've got packages for this, we can do five days, five, blah, 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 blah whatever the case may be, um, et cetera. And and then you have like uh, a category for packages where people can drop down and select two day, four day, six day, ten day, right? There's another thing what to do with your bike during your stay, and that would be another section of the site, and they all work together. I think you'd literally, quite honestly, have overcooked this recipe. You've literally got an entire site worth of stuff on one page, and it seems to be continually being added to, and I don't know. I just think you've overcooked it. Thank you, Tim. Anybody else? Oh, we're looking at uh, number six on our run list. It's titled, Should I Remove This Content Immediately? It's from Anna Maria Swiatekia. Uh, Swiatekia. Um... Anna Maria said, hi, I hired a freelancer to write content for my blog. And recently I found out that he copied the content from another site. It is not uh, exact copy-paste, but he uses the same uh, article format and even reviewed the same product. So the content is very similar to the sites from where he copied. I want to, to ask how bad is this for search engine optimization? Um, should I remove this content immediately? Um, it is the first time I've had this issue. Uh, I don't want to even say that I pay for this content, so I feel even more um, disappointed and sad. Um. Yeah, well, so first off, it's a learning curve. You've just, um, you know, it's a learning curve. You've just hired someone that, you, you know, you didn't produce what they should have done. So that's a learning curve. Uh, the second learning curve for you is before you hire anyone else uh, at any point um, is that you on deliverable it should pass a copyscape um test um so i you know so they deliver it to you you chuck it through copyscape copyscape says it's fine we don't detect any plagiarism here um you accept it and then pay for it a lot of sort of content or rather writing um sites you know writing copywriter content kind of sites the bigger ones um some of them include this in your you know the sort of like the, your content package that you uh, purchase 
um, which gives you a little bit of peace of mind. Uh, if you're going to continue to do that, um, you know, just by yourself, looking for writers, uh, which is always good to build up a pool of your, for your own, um, you should use Copyscape moving forward. Having said that, um, have you checked chucked this into Copyscape? Has it come back? Like, is it does it detect it's totally plagiarized? Or does it detect it's partially copied and stuff like that? Because I'm guessing you're looking from from what you know, uh, like a competitor. You probably, you know, and I'm I guess you're looking at it, going, uh, oh, you know. Um, so it may not be necessarily, you know, from a. Uh, I'm not saying it's good, but what I'm saying is it may it may not be as bad as you think if you double check it. Um, uh, the other thing is, could you have it modified? Like instead of throwing away that, you know, could you could you update it yourself? You know, like if if you know the business, could you modify it, or is it that just that bad that um, it's just like you know? So, mm, uh, and the other flip side is, yeah, you could publish it. I'm probably not going to be too bad. But if you can see that it's pretty much copied, like, you know, if that other company is is protective of, of, over their stuff and it is very, very similar, they could DMC that page if you publish it. You know, that's another thing you need to think about. Um, so there's a whole lot of questions there. I think at the end of the day, it's you need to just see what kind of quality you're going to be publishing. If you can already feel it's totally copied, like it may just you may just take this you know take this as a learning uh, it's not it's not pleasant um uh, just keep it as some backup that perhaps you can tweak over time to make it into something more unique uh maybe it's got you know it's got the bones to make something into um yeah so I think it's it's a personal decision. You need to look at it, compare it, uh, and then kind of see what, what the options are. I mean, if it's so similar, um, that other company could also DMCA you on that. And Google, Google, for example, might go, yeah, yeah, no, that is too similar. But I don't know. It's a decision for you to make. But, you know, it's also a learning thing. You're not going to make the mistake again. Yeah. Yeah. And check also for images if there are any. Um, because you might, sometimes you might get away with text sort of being slightly different. But if you use the same mess, um, image, then, you know, DMCA will go through. One other thing that they should carefully peruse the uh, content for uh, links uh, that have been dropped in. Um, if there's something wrong, generally people do all the wrong things, not just some of them. All right, uh, let's um, move on now to number seven. Um, it's Titled Do I Need to re Resubmit My Sitemap? Um, and it's from Fifi Aterville. Um, Fifi said, Hi guys. Uh, first of all, I used um, a, a rank map um, search engine optimization plugin. Uh, do I need to resubmit my sitemap to, to Google uh, after changing the structures of my URLs? Uh, for example, uh, it's double TPS, uh, full colon slash slash www.website.com slash product hyphen category slash home hyphen depot slash kitchen hyphen appliances slash cooker. That's enough, Jim. Jesus wept. <laughs> I got it out without breathing. <laughs> Flipping that, mate. Okay, look, um, so Rank Math, your plugin, typically has nothing to do with your sitemap. Um, I guess if you're using Rank Map, you're using WordPress, okay? 
So you updated it, you've changed it with WordPress, your, which should automatically update in your sitemap. Um, it, it should, so all you need to do is double check your sitemap, right? Has these been reflected and updated within your sitemap? If it has, you don't need to resubmit it. That sitemap will change in the actual sitemap. It, and you won't need to redo that. What you may want to do, just to kind of like uh, speed things up, because Google and indexing has been horrendous of late, um, you may want to take, let's say you've got four categories, you may want to just take the top line URL of all four new categories and submit those URLs um, for indexing. Um, even though the sitemap's correct and changed in Google, you're just saying, hey, he has four new pages. And it will just help them find those top categories, which they will actually work their way through anyway. Uh, it, it it may help just getting those uh, additional four found, you know, quickly, those categories, and then internal products or whatever within those categories. Um, but no, just double check the sitemap itself. It's not the actual plugin. Thank you, Tim. Right, let's um, move on if nobody else has anything to add on that. Number eight on our run list is from Joe Akira. Akira, Akira, yeah. Um, it's titled including keywords in image alt text. Um, Joe said, uh, hi, a real beginner here. Uh, he said, I'm just learning about including keywords in image alt text. My question is, how do you do this well um, if there's no way to get a keyword into the literal image description? Uh, for example, uh, you are using the image as a visual representation of an abstract concept. Um, can you... Um, uh, for example, describe the picture and then add um, ellipsis um, uh, illustrating article about keyword. Well, I wouldn't do that personally um, because in this instance, the image is performing a function. It's representing an abstract concept which you would put in words in out so that uh, people who are visually impaired uh, can understand what the page is about. So I wouldn't add extraneous stuff like that. I would just say what this image is so that a person using a screen reader, for example, can understand the page. Yep, thank you, Mr. Taki. Anybody else? Okay, number nine on our run list is from Tanzila Ashraf. It's titled What's the Biz What's the Purpose of a Business Listing in Search on Search Engine Optimization? Um and Zilla goes on to ask, uh, when it comes to off-page and link, link building, why do S SEOs um, go for business listing? How does this help my uh, um, website ranking on Google if I submit my website on the business listing site? Business listing site. Uh, I wonder if Tanzila means uh, Google My Business. Nobody has. Um, I, I think that's what uh, Tanzila is asking. Yeah, um, when he or she says, uh, what's the purpose of a business listing in SEO? 
Surely that would be the um, Google My uh, Business. Yeah. Um, okay. So first off, you don't submit a website to, to Google My Business. Google My Business has two premises, right? Two main things. One, it's a local business that exists at a location, right? That is open to customers, the public, you know, at a location during the set opening hours, like uh, Bob's bookstore is open from eight to five at this location. You can go to Bob's bookstore. It makes sense. People can find Bob's bookstore on maps. People can type in Bob's bookstore and get directions, right? Okay. So you're submitting their business, not a website. The other premise is if you serve customers at their location, right? So you don't serve customers from a location as such. So you're not on the high street. You customers come to you. Okay. So you go and wash their windows. You're, you're, you're a locksmith, you're an electrician, right? So vitamin C face wash sounds to be a product sounds to be an online product and it's not eligible for a Google My Business listing because it doesn't exist as a business, you know, in the physical world. No person comes to you, right, with the, to give you, you know, so if it's a beautician doing vitamin C face wash, that's another story. But yours sounds like an online product. It's therefore not eligible for a Google My Business listing because it's not a local business either operating from a location or serving customers at their location. So it's not eligible. Um, you don't need to worry about it um, in that sense. Thank you, Tim. All right, uh, let's, oh, it's um, that time again, I think, guys. Yes, it's thank you for watching time. All right, so we'll be back um, next week um, to do uh, this all again. And um, um, before I go, I must thank um, the, the people who answer questions uh, through the week um, and, the, and uh, the people who uh, uh, record our, uh, our, our, our video clips. Uh, and some people who do both, like Tim Kappa. Um, yeah. Um, okay. <laughs>